hello beautiful people welcome back to the channel well uh, by the end of this video we're going to be able to do this the main goal of the video of course is to uh, finish our process of adding products to our uh, Firebase database so by the end of the video you'll be able to select pictures and man you may need to select different pictures but since I don't I don't have different pictures of the same product I'm just adding the same and um, you'll give the product name which is going to be filler we're going to select the category for the product in our case shoes and then we're going to select the quantity let's suppose uh, 40 and here 1700 is the price and we can select the sizes of the shoes and after that is done you're going to be able to hit the add button uh, which because we are adding three different images to our firebase storage may take a while to load because we are loading the image one and then the image two and then the image three but this circle progress indicator is going to be loading until the images are done just like now and you'll have the notification saying the product was added uh, and after that is done we can come to our we can come to our firebase storage and if you go to storage you'll be able to view the set of images you just added to the database and these are the images currently present on our storage and if you go to database and you create uh, you click on Cloudfire store we have products a new collection called products and for the practice we have different products and products ID so I hope you guys are excited if you are hit that like button subscribe to the channel and see you on the video peace so beautiful people here's where we left off on our uh, last video and um, this is what we're able to do I'll go to add product and we can add some products to our firebase but now we want to upload we want to actually upload the images so I have some images I can use here uh, in the real world you would have three different images but I'll just repeat the same okay let me go back to the full screen because now uh, we may need to do this on on full screen uh, there's something I want you guys to understand before we even start coding that since we are dealing with three images not a single one uh, we may need the procedure may be kind of a little bit different because when you only want to upload the single image that's easy but here have to have in mind that we want three images so each product is going to have three images belonging to that same product so that the user will be able to slide when he is viewing the product so uh we will try we'll try we'll try to do that the best way possible now uh the first thing i want you guys to do in here is there's something i kind of forgot to add final and now we want to include our firebase storage and we'll define this as storage and it's going to be equal to an instance of the firebase storage of course so a firebase storage dot oops dot instance so this is what we have now I can come in and comment this our task so here let me add something else mm. 
here we have picture okay okay for now we can do reference Oops. so we have an instance of of our fair base storage we're creating a reference of that and the child which is going to be the name on of our file on the database is going to be picture but since we are going to do this for multiple images I'll define this as picture one and here the path is going to be one and task task one okay perfect and we want to put file which is the file we are uploading and uh, the name of the file here is going to be image one so with this we have our first task nothing 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 too too fancy let me just copy this because we will need three of them so here we will have image URL 1 image URL 2 image URL 3 and we, we will store the URLs of the images we are uploading on these variables and here again let me just do one and then this and this one will just serve to differentiate this file you will understand let me just copy and paste this so we will try to follow this approach copy and paste it so of course here we may need to declare this as picture 2 and for the name of the file which is going to be the name of the database is going to be 2 then this is going to be a unique name so I'm giving different numbers to make sure that the name is going to be unique and we are going to define this guy here as the task 2 and here is going to be picture 2 and we are going to upload image 2 and finally here we have picture 3 3 here and test is going to be test 3 storage reference which picture we want to upload here is picture 3 and finally here we have image 3 So if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, these methods are future methods, so we can put a sync in here. And here for the task one, let me make sure we're doing okay we don't return we don't get a future so it's okay so uh, here's the tricky part because I didn't really test this theory and I'm testing now on tape on video and let's hope everything will run just perfectly fine so uh, what are we going to do we are going to put here task tree dot and uh, of course we want to check when our task t is completed meaning the last image which is the image tree is uploaded to the database and 
when that is done we are going to get a storage task snapshot and uh, okay let me do something here I can create a let's create the storage storage task snapshot and we're going to call this snapshot one for the first image and what are we going to do here we're going to take the task one on complete then we have here the snapshot and what we want to do is basically to return this snapshot And probably we may need to await here so uh, what are we doing here here we are saying that when the task one is complete or when the first image is uploaded we want to return this snapshot to snapshot one and then let's create another stories task snapshot when you're going to call this snapshot 2 and it's going to have the same flow so I can just copy this so when the task 2 is completed we want to do the same thing but now for the last image we are going to be a bit different the, the approach we're going to follow is a bit different and here we're going to do snapshot which is the snapshot we are returning I can put just snapshot 3 to make sure we don't run into any confusions And we're going to create an asynchronous method in here okay so what are we going to do inside of this asynchronous method is the following first of all uh, we will take our variable we created uh, for the image URL one and we're going to set it equal to snapshot one or oh, we have to await because this may we may be dealing with a future here so snapshot one dot ref we are getting the reference of the snapshot one dot we want get downloadable download URL and what this this is going to do a simple thing is going to return a future string containing the download URL for that particular image so that we can access the image we can download it and do whatever we want with it I'll copy and I'll paste it here and now we want the image URL 2 is going to be equal to the snapshot 2 again get download image and finally for our image URL tree, which is the final, is going to be equal to await snapshot tree ref get download URL. So what are we doing here? We, we are inserting the values of the the URLs we are going to get after we upload the images to our storage 
then we want to get the URL for those image and we are going to place those URLs into these variables okay and that's pretty much it that's pretty much all we have to do for now um, we can go to our now we can follow we we could follow two approaches because we could create a different file to upload these images to upload this into i'm sorry where is the file now at this stage we have the urls of the images what we want to do is to insert those values inside our database so what i'm doing is uh as you see we did here uh, with the brand and the products we created a different file that is going to deal with the database uh, operations but for this case in particular I don't know which approach is the best mm. okay L let us let us let us work the proper way and here let's create a new file and we're going to call this product here we have the file product and what we're going to do we're going back to the brand just copy everything and we'll just eliminate what we don't need where is our product file here we have it paste it and um, upload product we can call this dead and in here we're going to take a map Details is going to be the name of this and here we are going to use the product ID so we are generating again uh, an ID for our project using our UID we just paste it here the name of our collection is going to be products And in here, we will just set details. So we don't need any of these functions here for now. So uh, what are we doing here? Doing a small recap. Oh, and we would need to change the name of this to product service I'm doing this because I mean I don't want to write everything from scratch since we're using the same logic but what in, what are we doing here is pretty simple I don't need to use this for now it's pretty simple uh, we are basically creating a class product service and then we're creating instance of our file store we have our reference called products which is going to be the name of our collection and then we have this method called upload product then we have ID and we are generate we are generating a, a our own ID for the product and we are doing here collection name products and we are going to insert a document of this product ID and then we are going to set a uh, data is equal to this okay and um, let us see which type of information can we transmit to our product um, we may need to import that file in here
then we have the product service and uh, imported oops I guess I imported the wrong thing okay okay here we have the product service and this is going to be a product service so we're going to create an object of the type product service I don't know what's the issue um oh, okay I'm putting minus here not equal that's the issue okay now we have that out of the way and now uh, from the product what do we want the product name so let's 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 redefine this in here and I don't want to I changed my mind about this let us do something like this and we want a string product name and then we will want another string for the brand and then we will want and you'll understand why am I doing this in a while mm. another string uh, for the category So I have the product name, the product brand, the category, and we will want a list for the sizes. And um, a list for the images. And here we're going to have the images URL, and of course, how come I forgot to set the price? Let's create a double, which is going to hold the price. Okay. So, what are we going to do in here? is basically we're going to create name and for this we're going to have product name and I did this because uh, it would be easier for us to come and edit this in the future for example I want the ID And I'll just insert here the product ID. If we want the brand, we can just insert here brand. And then we want the category. Category, what else? Then we have a list of sizes. Um, let's let's do one thing. Let's see which fields we have available in here. Sizes we have quantity, and quantity can be an int, no problem. And we would need probably 
a list of colors but okay we will we will deal with that not now that's not super super important okay uh, if we go back here to our add product there's something I would like to add we have here to our quantity is of course our price So we will need to create a price controller for this and since this doesn't exist we will copy and come here and we will just have here a final price controller is equal to text editing controller done we have our price controller now because I, I forgot to add the price field and we do have a lot of things here and uh, we can just write price blah 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 initial value we're going to put here one Because the quantity cannot be empty. Label text quantity and uh, label text with this We're going to be price and of course our initial value. Is going to be zero dot zero zero. Uh, if I try to run this, let us see what we have. Okay, let's hit our manage. Oh. <gasps> okay we have here our initial value controllers okay i don't know what's the issue or which one of these fields has one it seems like the issue is with our initial values in here so let's just stop this and run the app from Okay, while the app is running to avoid wasting time, um, we have all of this information now, and uh, what are we going to do? Is since we already have that function we will just put here a product service dot upload product and uh, to make sure these products will always be passed these values these parameters will always be passed we can add required in here. Can this work? No, it cannot. Okay, so I guess it's not it's not it's not really a deal to do to do it like that. But um I'm doing this to ensure that all our positional parameters are going to be passed correctly. Okay, uh, let me take a look at the app. Uh, and here's what we have now. Let me show you guys. D 
this is what we have now oh let me go back i didn't like it very much let's go back 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 put this on full screen mm, product name let's remove the label text we'll just leave the hint in there and what we will oh, 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 oh we have an issue somewhere ah it's in here okay Let's create a list of the type string called image list and uh, it's going to be simply equal to image URL 1, image URL 2 and finally image URL 3 okay and let me have a sneak peek at the app in here and uh, this is what we have on our app and I don't really like the way this is squished but to solve this issue to avoid displaying things like that what we can do is we can go up here and decrease the size of our image boxes talking about the display one and display two and here for the padding instead of 70 let's try to give it 50 50 to make sure everything will be uh, well visible on the screen fifty fifty okay my hydro load is not working as a control save let's try like this okay and now uh, now our problems are solved because here we have what, what what we need perfect let's let's wrap this thing up right now um for the product name we are going to provide product name controller dot text and for the price we're going to provide price controller dot text but we may have some issues here <laughs> which of the methods so we will parse the part the price controller dot text into our double so we can assign because the, the value of price is a double not a string okay so what else do we want 
uh, for the sizes we'll make this equal to selected sizes for the images we'll make this equal to our image list and for the quantity quantity controller dot text But I guess that it's an integer, so I can simply do int dot parse, and we're going to parse this string. Okay, so if this is right. If this is right we may need to let's go back to our form key current state uh, reset and uh, we'll copy this flutter toast and we will write here product added to okay there is a lot of things going on here but it's time to see if things are working I already closed the app I'll just run the app again and hopefully nothing breaks because there, there was a lot of code going on here. And now we still have to configure our app to iOS, but that's not a big deal. That's something I'm going to do. And uh, another note I have for you guys is that um, I will upload some videos soon about streams, to be more specific, the blog pattern and RX Dart because that's something super super useful and I would like to start using that on our app and mainly because we are going to be dealing with a lot of data we may even create our own API so that's something I, I want you guys to have in mind okay we have here our app now it's time to test it to see if everything's fine so let's add some random images um, and I'll write here shoes for the category I can put shoes quantity available I will put 15 price is going to be 1500 for the available sizes we have 36 38 40 44 and 42 add product oh we still have to configure the function, the method to be called when the add product button button is tapped. Validate and load. So, hold on. We have validate and load. Oh, the operations are already. Mm. We were supposed to write a code that's going to express. Ah, uh, okay. the the product was added, but my my problem was this. We are supposed to write a code that when the app is loading, when something is load loading, is going to display to the user that something is loading. Okay. So how can we do that? Mm, let's go up on our widget tree and here we have a column 
So what I can do here is I can wrap this column inside of a stack. Or else, instead of doing that, let's create a boolean here just to finish our video. Bool called is loading which by default is false and then here on our child we'll just create we'll just take is loading we'll check is loading So if is loading is equal to true, we want to display circular progress indicator. So what are we doing here? We are creating this variable is loading and circle progress. If it's true, we are going to have here cir circular progress indicator. And if it's false, we are going to simply have our column. <coughs> Sorry. We can wrap this inside of a column of a center widget. Oops, not that. I wanted to wrap this here. Um, it's wrapping the wrong thing. Okay, we'll come back to that. Here on our validate function, we will do the following. So if that is valid, first we are going to set is loading equals true. Let's make use of a fat arrow function. So uh, as soon as that happens, we want is load to be equal to true. And if all of this is true here, we are going to set our is loading equal to false. And the same thing in here the same thing in here okay hopefully now we can uh, run the app hopefully now we can just go and run our app let's add another product Now we have these shoes here. Product name. Valency. Category. Shoes. Quantity. 58. Price. Uh, and finally, the sizes. We are just going to pick random sizes. Add product. And you can see that now something is processing, so we have our circular uh, our circular progress indicator. And this is going to be doing this until our loading is complete. And keep in mind that we are adding three pictures to the database, so this may take a while. But if you come here to our, now the product was added okay so after the project the product is added what we can do is <clears throat> let's let's create a set state 
not using a fat arrow because we may need to set a lot of things here. First we'll copy this, paste it here. Uh, what we want to clear, we want to clear the image the image URLs no we don't need to clear the image URLs we can just clear the image the image files How can we go about doing this? Oh, better yet, instead of doing this like that, we can just do this and uh, navigator. We're going to do a pop from this context. And this is all we need to do for now. Um, let's go to our Firebase and try to see if we are able to see the changes done. So if we go to our Firebase storage, this may take a while loading and if you see we have a lot of images here on our storage and uh, basically the image that we added but let's go to our database and see how it is structured and if you go to our database we have a new collection called products here And for the product, okay, okay, I can see now that we have some issues passing some of these variables. And this is something we may need to fix. But no, that's not a big fix. We we are going to fix this on our next videos because we are getting now now for the brand and the category. But okay, that's not a big issue. Uh, we are able to get our images on our database and we have the new collection we are just making sure we are going to make sure that these values are filled correctly the video was very long but if you guys liked it please don't forget to hit the subscribe button because that helps a lot and uh, see you guys on the next one bye